I love cutting holes in boats. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. In the coming weeks and months, the boat is going to be changing drastically in the interior. So this week I'm working on the starboard side bunk on the lower side, finishing that one, and working on the port side bunk, getting that built. What's really fun about this project is I'm trying to fit a lot in a small space, and so it's a fun puzzle to like adjust a little bit here, move a little bit there to make everything fit and be comfortable at the same time. If you've been watching this channel, you know by now my method for building new foam parts. First, I template the part. Here I am templating the longitudinal wall that will support, support the lower bunk. I've definitely gotten a lot better at it as the project has progressed, which makes a difference in how much faster I can get a part made without too much fuss. And like I said last week, when I can accurately make these parts, I use less epoxy to fill the gaps, and the end product is lighter. Alright, I got the bottom bunk actually all cut out and ready to glue together. So right now what we're going to do is just use my CNA glue and glue all the pieces together so that we can take them out of the boat as one piece and laminate the back side of them like I did with this top piece in the garage and then we'll bring them back in and glue them back glue them into the boat. Last week I got a few comments about fiddles. Fiddles, for those who don't know, are little rails around shelving and counters that act as guardrails, keeping items from falling off when the boat is healing. The commenters were saying that I need them on the shelves that I'm building around these bunks, and I do agree. The plan is to make the fiddles throughout the boat out of wood, adding some warmth and contrast to the mostly painted interior. Yeah. Ready for number number two? This one will be even faster. What do you think? It's really cool to see your vision and CAD kind of be built. And with slats and mattresses, it'll really look like bunks. Yeah. 
I know, I need to put slots in here and like lay down and see what it feels like. That sounds really fun. Should we do that? Uh, yeah. Okay, so these are glued together with the, just the super glue, the CNA glue. And so I'm gonna pull them out and fiberglass them all together inside the shop. So now I'm going to fiberglass the inside and the outside of both of these, uh, put them in the oven, and then hopefully by the end of the day, this evening, we can glue them back into the boat and make them permanent. I got the bunk pieces glued together and fit back in the boat and it was time to test them out so we cut some slats to see how it would feel. It's so cozy. I know you all think La Paz is a no-nonsense inspector but the secret's out. She's actually a cuddle muffin. The bunk appears to be plenty long. You just stretch your legs out. Yeah. Okay, you got six inches. How is it? This thing's pretty close to my face, but um, it's, you know, wide open on this side. I think it's okay. We want them to be snug, right? Because when we're at sea yeah. and it's rough conditions, that will be the best place on the whole boat to sleep. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you've been getting sleepy. You want to spend yeah, the night? Exactly. <laughs> go to bed. Maybe we should spend our first night on the boat. On the bunk beds? So the stuff on the starboard side quarter berth is done. The pieces are built. So I'm going to move on to the port side. This is another puzzle to solve as far as fitting everything in here that I want to fit. This is going to be a double bed uh, and it also is going to have a fuel tank inside it. There's going to be some nice shelving on the outboard edge of the bed and then a big hole is going to get cut in the bulkhead where people can climb into the bed. Making sure that there's enough headroom when, pe when people are in bed because there's a bench over top with a puzzle. Making sure that there's plenty of space for the fuel tank so that we have lots of fuel storage. Uh, and making it look nice and feel cozy as well. So I'm really looking forward to this puzzle part of the project. You know the drill by now. Here I am mocking up the edge of the bed that makes the shelf against the hole. Laying out the design of this shelf was pretty easy because there is lots of room when I only need to make one cabinet area.
so I'm in the port side quarter berth. The plan is, is for this to be a double bed. And then outboard, I built a shelf and cabinet area. And so this is basically the outboard side of the mattress. This line that I have lasered on here is the top of the mattress. And so I'm planning on putting a bunch of little cubbies in the side of this cabinet here. So I drew this thing out and built it and I immediately, as soon as I put it together, I realized it's way too big. I'm feeling kind of dumb about this, uh, that I cut out these materials and then realized it's too big. Meaning that what I'm gonna do is shrink it down uh, and have to cut material off that I just made. I'm wasting, I wasted some materials. The reason that I need to make it smaller is that this whole thing just feels gaudy inside this space. The shelf and the cabinets are really deep and so it makes the mattress smaller. I just don't like it. What I'm gonna do now is basically just shrink it closer to the outboard side of the hull. I'm gonna try and make the width of this shelf more like seven or eight inches as opposed to, you know, it's closer to 18 inches at the forward end. So it's back to the drawing board. So I had to cut down the shelf side of the cabinet and re-template the longitudinal wall which made a different shape. I was able to use the same pieces that I used to make the original and just cut them down but I like to keep the offcuts as big as possible to make them more usable in the future. It was definitely frustrating to feel like I wasted the time and having to redo this one. But we are building the dream boat so it has to be done right. I was feeling a lot better about the second iteration, so it was time to put the finishing touches on it with cubbies and inside shelving. I actually used the same template for cutting out the whole side windows as I did for making these cubbies. I like to cut out the basic shape with the jigsaw, leaving as little material as possible, and then using the tracing bit on my router with the template to make the perfect shape. I'm a lot happier with this piece than the last one, which was way too big. It is a bummer that I ended up cutting a lot of pieces off. And so I have smaller pieces to deal with as cut off cuts, which is a bummer, but this turns out, turned out really good. There are compromises that came with this. The storage space is a little bit smaller, but I figure when you're in bed, you're just storing like books and phones and stuff like that in the cubbies. The mattress gets bigger, but one thing, the reason that I didn't start with this was that I, I really don't like mattresses touching the hole because the holes tend to sweat a little bit. In this situation, how I have this, the mattress is going to touch the hole at like this corner right here. So I'll have to, um, put some of the breather material that can go under the mattress to make sure that the mattress doesn't get wet from the hole from water condensing on the hole and molding that's that's my biggest i i'm always worried about mold i think it turned out really good it's gonna be a nice big mattress it'll be a nice big space to to sleep in so what do you think who me everybody i love it it is like obviously, it obviously looks better than the first iteration. Yep. Sleek and. And yeah, you'll get like nice light coming in from the window. 
it'll be a bigger space inside here. Sometimes it takes a few iterations to get it right. It's yep. part of the process. Yeah, totally. And I'm sure you'll figure out a way to use those off cuts somehow. You always do. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. The next thing to do for me is to cut out this hole through the bulkhead. There was a lot of futzing trying to get everything to fit in here and make sure that there was enough beef in the bulkhead to, you know, stay structurally sound and as well as fit a mattress and a fuel tank. So the fuel tank will basically be this line is the top of the fuel tank. And then I'm gonna leave three inches above the fuel tank between the fuel tank and then these will be where the slats are that go across that the mattress sits on. And then the mattress extends up to <clears throat> this dotted line here. Assuming it's an eight inch thick mattress, which is like a standard thickness. We don't need to make it that thick. This hole will be cut out. This is where somebody can crawl into bed and out of bed. The reason that I'm not making it wider is because there will be a cabinet on the opposite side of this bulkhead inside the like changing the stateroom area. If I made this hole any better, it would encroach on, encroach on the, the hanging locker on the other side. I can't make it any taller because the bench is up here. And so the bottom corner of the bench will be like right here. I need to leave enough B four inches of, of material there so that, you know, nothing collapses basically. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this hole. I'm gonna jigsaw it out first and then I'll get my router and template and uh, make it pretty. Ready? Ready. Can we hit the vacuum? Big enough to crawl through? I mean, I hope so. I love cutting holes. I know you've seen enough fiberglassing for this episode, but I gotta tape this, all these parts together and then these, this will be ready to be glued into the boat. So that's my project for this evening. I won't film it, but that's what I'm working on. Bunks and cabinet pieces are pretty much done. Got this hole cut and next week it's really going to start coming together in here. I'm going to work on the engine room, get the bridge put back in that uh, connects the basically the cockpit to the galley area. And so, like I said at the beginning of the show, it, things are going to change very quickly in here over the next few weeks and months. We have a couple lovely new Patreons to thank this week. Thank you to Peppy Longsocks, who's in Georgian Bay on Lake Huron. He sails on the Orange Crate, a Chaser 29. 
uh, out of Georgian Bay. He told us this great story about how him and some friends got together and they built some opties to start a sailing school for kids there in Georgian Bay. And they've grown over the past five years. Now they're getting into more fun junior class sailing boats. So thank you very much to Peppy Longstocks. And also thank you to Tomas and Lee who are in Sweden on the west coast of Sweden. They have this really gorgeous Najad 34 that they get to cruise around Norway, all over Scandinavia. And uh, the boat's called Aeoli. So thank you very much, Tomas and Lee. And thank you again to everybody who's helping support the project.